Welcome everybody to episode seven. Seven, right? I almost said six. <laughs> <laughs> episode seven of What the Grain of Salt podcast with your host Eddie. I'm Eric. Uh, howdy. I'm <laughs> and I'm Alan. Nice to see you guys. They already forgot they're on here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you guys are pretty much hosts at this point since you guys are like I'm just nervous. Oh yeah, if you can, if you had, can tell, she drew the bleh. short straw. Yeah, there you go. right. Like a few minutes before starting this, we had to decide who's gonna wear the shot collar. That was tacos, and she lost. <laughs> so there you go. We spun a wheel and. Oh, she spun the wheel. She's like, the wheel. what was it? Chick fil A, wings, Chick-fil-A, tacos, apparently. and burgers. No, tacos, tacos. wings. It burgers. went like red over my head. That I don't know why he's the only one that got an actual restaurant oh, pointed to him. But. It was the oh, the preset options and we i didn't want to change it i was like let's just get this over with shock for laziness <laughs> oh, i gotta prepare i gotta like tense my mouth might be a little nice i'm gonna have my fun with this no i'm just like <laughs> last thing i'm just playing i mean you did take quite the brunt of it last time oh man i think it was like to the halfway of mark i was like already feeling it i was like feeling pretty fun i was like i feel funny i feel strange <laughs> your lips were all numb uh, yeah i was like like that, I was like, okay, that's not normal. But no, yeah, it wasn't that bad. I, was, I guess I was more like, I guess anxious about every time I was about to electrocute me. Eventually, once we've all had a turn wearing it, uh, we're going to step up to a taser. Uh, <laughs> I, I know I'm probably going first for that one. <laughs> I am feeling the anxiety that Alan was talking about. <laughs> I'm feeling it. Oh, my God. I mean, you only get used to it. Eventually. After the third one, yeah, yeah, it's like, let's do this. <laughs> let's do this, Dan. <laughs> anyway, once again, we're all just a bunch of idiots having a conversation on camera. Uh, again, uh, if you have anything to add to anything we say in the comments, we'll comment. <laughs> yeah. And we're not experts in any of the <clears throat> topics we talk about, so take everything we say with a grain of salt. Are you going to do the thing again? No. Yeah. Are you doing? Yeah. Until we forget. Until we forget. Until somebody tells us it's lame. <laughs> <laughs> I told you it's lame. I know. We should stop doing it. <laughs> okay. That'll be the thumbnail. All of us going like this. Yeah, and it's a thing now. Even though we didn't want it to be. You. You're the one that's like, let's do it. <laughs> well, I, was, I was like, are we doing it? We're doing it. Oh, right. I don't know why y'all just start. You just start. Someone started touching the rock. Yeah. And well, that's like, what like. That was the thing. It's the point of the show, you know. Yeah. Take it with a grain of salt. This is our giant grain of salt. Yeah, yeah I'm yeah. sporting today at 3D Energy. It is called the Liberty Pop, <laughs> and it does taste exactly what it tastes. It tastes like, like Uncle freedom. Sam. It tastes <laughs> like Uncle Sam. It tastes oh, like, no. <laughs> like Uncle Sam's nipples. <laughs> what? Oh, what? Oh, my God. Sorry, sorry. All right, first topic of the episode. How do you know what Uncle Sam's nipples It's a family are? guy skit. It's oh, I thought he said it was a family yeah. thing. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Like Eric? Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's just it. Cause... <laughs> so, Alan. Yeah. I haven't heard from you like all week. What you been up to? Interesting week. Uh, I've been focusing on myself. Um, I pretty much like, I went looking for, like, well, I found a job. Like, I actually found me. And then, um, aside from that, I got all my, I had, like, a couple things I needed to fix, like, in regards to, to, like, some legal issues I was having. And then on top of that, uh, I've been working out. I started working out again. I'm trying to focus on myself and get back on track, you know, healthier mind, healthier body, all that, you know, cliche stuff. But, yeah. That's good. Yeah, no, it's been a productive week. Yeah, yeah big wake up. So, it's cool. Yeah, I was wondering, I was like, man, Alan came down to the valley and then just, <laughs> yeah, I was like, I was. It was like, oh, I remember coming down. I was like, oh, podcast probably. I was like, but what about like in between? And it's just like, <laughs> it's just like naps and self, but like working out and finding a way to burn time. But now, yeah, I'm actually just. I, I look forward to always like coming on the podcast. And aside from that, I'm looking forward to starting to work, like trying to get my, you know, feet on the ground and doing stuff. But yeah, no, it's been a productive week, pretty cool week. That's good to hear. What about you? Work. That's about it. My schedule doesn't really change. All right, the new. <laughs> I'm sorry to say, but work. <laughs> nah, but it's like uh, days off. I just chill. I think my past days off, I I hung out with this dude. Oh yeah, we took photos yeah. for the thumbnails. We're actually taking thumbnail photos this time. Cue the photo shoot. Uh, Eric, is it? Can you do it like a slideshow? No, sure. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do it. I'll just have him just like sliding around. I guess. <laughs> Cue the. You you grabbed for the drink and I was like, oh man. 
Oh, this is gonna be fun. This is gonna be fun. You don't even have to. I'm over here with the great assault. I'm over here. My face is gonna. I like this. It's funny when it's not you. We're gonna need. We're gonna need a medical team. At some point, oh, don't we like, have like like a friend who's like a nurse? Or don't you guys have a friend who's a nurse? Yeah, she's like an hour and a half that way. Oh, <laughs> isn't well, everything so over like, here? Isn't everything? True. Yeah. True. I have a medical bag. It's just like there's no, no, there's nothing in it. It's just it just has a term of uh, E D E M S. I can't speak. <laughs> I think it's withdrawal from not drinking freaking Monster. energy drinks it's anymore. It's brain punishing you. It's, like it's only been like, three days. Yeah, yummy, yummy, yummy monster. <laughs> it's only been three days and my body's like... <laughs> also from sugar. Oh my god. No, I'm not gonna... What, you thought I was eating? No, I'm just paranoid. I, was <laughs> I am just him. paranoid. Oh man. I'm already doing the YouTuber... Everybody, oh. I'll do, do it. Don't, know. Don't do it. <laughs> She's not gonna do it. No, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Lack of participation. Oh, sorry. I will participate. Now. <laughs> oh, man. this is going this great. Is <laughs> he says that now. He's next. And then I'm next, probably. Yeah, I think Clarice is yeah, gonna love like that I'm one. Twenty five for this guy. We should just have Clarissa like in the back. We're gonna do a what do you call it? A call. <laughs> Shocking <laughs> memories. She probably. Put it up like yeah, that. Well, call it online one. <laughs> oh my goodness. That would be interesting. You know, I'll be the first up, Danny. Thirty-five percent. I don't know. You get tired of it real quick. <laughs> yeah. How quickly? We <laughs> use. I don't know if you guys have ever played the game. Um, keep talking and nobody explodes. It's basically a VR game where the person wearing the VR headset can only see a bomb with a bunch of different modules on it, and the everybody else has uh, papers to the solutions of each of those modules and we have to talk the person with the headset on how to solve the puzzles on each that module. sounds interesting. And if you don't get all the modules done within the time limit, uh, what? Yeah, it's you cutting you off. I think I moved it and I don't even know how. No. No, You're it's good. good. It's You're fine. Sure? You're good. Yeah. yeah. It's Behind fine. the scenes talk. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> Trying but to be quiet about it. <laughs> like, you haven't moved anything. Okay, <laughs> uh, I just got in my head. So Bye. whenever, if you if you don't solve all the modules, all the puzzles within the time limit, the bomb explodes. Normally, it's just you just hear a small explosion noise, and that's it. The game's over. You lose. But what we did is if that you couldn't if you couldn't solve the puzzles. Who, uh, mm. you get shocked. <laughs> 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 if you can't solve the puzzles, you get shocked. And every time we did it, we raised it a little bit. Uh, which kind of made everybody just... At first, we started getting more and more nervous. And at the end of the, at the, end of the night, we were just like, I don't want to play anymore. <laughs> this isn't fun. Like, nobody wanted to go up, because we're just like... We're like, what's the, what's the answer? Uh, if you... You cut the green wire if there's enough. What's the answer? And then, boom. Then, ah. It was a fun night. I think it was a fun night. I think it was. <clears throat> count me out of that one, though. I feel like it, it's it's not that much of like a big shock. It feels like an electric pen, but once you press your thumb on, and then I feel like it just. And what makes it scary is the anticipation and seeing them like reach for it. That's what makes it a lot worse. Yeah, especially, especially because when I was thinking, they both had, there was like their drinks, and I didn't know if they were reaching for their drinks. Yeah, every, every time Eric's reaching for his cup, I'm like... Oh yeah, because it's the same hand, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but no, that's a, I didn't even know that, well, I mean, I guess by now, I guess, yeah, they do make games with shot collars. That sounds like a fun drinking game, though. But I can see how it didn't get fun. No, I lost yeah, its touch really well. Real quick. Uh, the main reason I got it was so I could take part in drinking games. When I'm not drinking, because mm. I'm cutting off, like I'm, I'm, like really, cutting out the amount of drinking I've done. Because I never, I never had a problem with it, but I, yeah, something like one time we got, him and I got drunk, at a party, and then we were talking about it, the next morning, and like, dude, yeah. that wasn't fun. <laughs> like, well, the party itself was fun, but the feeling of just being drunk, I was just like, I don't like this. <laughs> It's that one hangover that's just too strong and you have an epiphany. It wasn't even the hangover yet. I was still drunk, like, during, like, on the night, because I, I didn't drive. Uh, but on the way home, I was just like, I don't like this. 
And I was like, I think I'm getting old. But I'm 25. <laughs> Good lord. That's, that's how I felt the Saturday after that party. The, or like the week, the day after that party on Saturday, I just... I haven't, I haven't wanted to drink Budweiser since then. I just have like PTSD over how much I drank that night. It was just way too much, yeah. Nah, it's just something I'm not going to do. Maybe only on special occasions, but that's a maybe. Uh, like, say, if Alan leaves, we'll throw a party for him. Like, yay. There's always a party for <laughs> <laughs> There's always a party. We'll find something to party we'll about. We'll find something to party about. Yeah. But well, we've always been those kind of people. Like, we don't need drinks to have fun. Mm-mm. That's one thing I brought up exactly when I started hanging out with you. Well, when I got here, it was like, we had a great time. I don't even think we needed to drink or do anything. No, that, that's, yeah. that's something that's always been true. We've never needed alcohol to have fun. Like, we're just stupid that way. Even today, when we're laughing around. <laughs> yeah, we're Whataburger. We went to Whataburger just... Again. <laughs> again. Uh, here you go. Hey. A lot of easy. Somebody, yeah, somebody keeps fries. ordering large fries and doesn't finish them. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> well, I was waiting for the <laughs> She shocks herself right after. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I need it. You should totally win. I'm so, uh, no, I wouldn't. Keep going, Whataburger. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Oh, what even happened this time? Uh, Andrea got the wrong order. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. I ordered a Whataburger Jr. You know, something small. I didn't want anything too big. But um, they come, they bring us our food. They bring Eric's food first because he ordered first. And I ordered right after him. So I guess she thought, like, oh, this one must be hers. This is a huge-ass burger. And I'm like, this isn't mine. I turn, I look at this dude, like, is this yours? <laughs> I didn't even look at I hardly even looked at no. it. I was like, no. Like no. no. I was like, I just assumed, like, mine would take a little longer. <laughs> and then she's like, oh, hey, ma'am, this isn't mine. And she's talking to her in Spanish. She's like, no es mi burger. <laughs> okay, <laughs> it wasn't bad. Yeah. <laughs> I don't speak fluent Spanish. I understand I mean, a good amount I of Spanish. I don't, but I mean, I'm not going to judge you. I'm like the translator when it comes to the group. No, I... I wish I did know Spanish, but I understand most of it, you know, of course, because my family speaks it, so I understand most of it, but uh, I just can't speak it. Like, I, I know what to say, but I'm just worried I'm going to say it wrong, or I'm just going to sound stupid, so I'd rather just be don't. comfortable enough to... Yeah, yeah so I, I just... Uh, I'm actually, the more you say it, the more comfortable you get, mm-hmm. and if you're wrong, they'll correct you. Yeah, most most not... people I've met, like, because I I grew up... Spanish was my first language, mm-hmm. but in school, they taught me exclusively in English. So, like, since I was never able to really practice my Spanish until I got home, but then my dad well, wasn't here. Like, he worked in the refineries, so he'd be gone for months at a time. And then my mom knows English very fluently, almost like you, as if you couldn't tell she even spoke Spanish. I talked to her in English, so I didn't really practice much Spanish. So now, I do speak Spanish. I can hold my conversation pretty well, but you can tell I'll struggle a few times. I'll, I'll struggle from time to time. But I've, I've had a very bad experience with, with, at work. I work at a big um, retail place, and a customer came up to me, asked me where a certain thing was in Spanish. And I honestly, I, I didn't understand. Like, uh, I told her in English, because like, I couldn't say it in Spanish. Like, man, I'm sorry, I don't understand. Let me take you to my other coworker who does speak Spanish. He'll be able to help you. But she's like, no, no, no. And then she goes off to the same coworker I was going to take her to and calls me a very mean word in Spanish. Benefa. No, I, it was just, I know it was a mean word. It was like word. five, but yeah, well, it, was just, it was like any of the bad ones. <laughs> yeah, you don't yeah, have to say words. them all, what? Don't Chica. remind Could me. Uh, uh, <laughs> was it this one? Yeah, no. like a top five bullet. Like, <laughs> he, he, he's like teasing. He's like, mmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> I know, I, I, I deserved it. You saw how I was you, doing it. Why would you ever just... Float your finger over the button and think. I was. I was. No, but we can say that's what we're doing. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm, no. Yeah, which is why I'm, I'm nervous. <laughs> I'm nervous to speak Spanish, or I'm, I'm just. I don't know. It's just that bad experience. I'd rather just take them to a coworker that does speak Spanish. Right, work smarter, not harder. <laughs> and, then, and then there's someone like me who just speaks it like right off the rails. I don't even care if I mispronounce a word. I just assume you'll get what I'm saying. <laughs> just like hopefully we get somewhere with this conversation. But no, there's a couple words that I do struggle with. Obviously, it's pretty much like um, there's a lot of like uh, like gender specific words or like you know like um, like gr- like Greece. 
like it wouldn't be like you know in, in English it doesn't have like a it doesn't seem like it has like a, a gender when you say it but like like grasa it won't be graso or stuff like that because some people will say it, but those are the kind of mistakes I'll make like giving like a word in specifics like to the the sex I'm speaking to or something like that because yeah so which it, are both correct technically depending on how you use it yeah and it's like it's very weird like that's a lot that's something that people don't understand about Spanish like the um, the words are very versatile you could use them in any which way and they could totally convey different messages and things you're trying to say too. It's not like English where you say it one way and it has usually but one the, meaning. However, though, I do believe Spanish is easier than English. Oh yeah, a lot there's, of people that, yeah. There's not nearly as many contradictory <laughs> rules. Like, like in in English, there's like so many um, exceptions to the rule that you would think that's the rule, mm -hmm. and it's so backwards. Like I before E except yeah. after C. Uh, isn't like conceive. And then it's not even right, like, all like, the time. I, I think I just said the wrong answer, but whatever. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah exactly. you get it, you get it. <laughs> but, um, I'm okay at Spanish. Like, I, like it's if I take too long between, um, like, actually practicing it, like, it's too long a time, then I'll get, like, I'll start getting that nerves again. But, not, like, when I'm at, like, at the refineries, damn near everybody speaks Spanish. Until, except for when I worked in... Oklahoma, because then nobody nobody spoke Spanish. That's cowboy country. Mm, in Chicago, though, everybody spoke Spanish. I was like, wow, this is kind of surprising. For real, so that's cool, yeah. That's interesting. Like, but anyway, going back to the original topic. Whataburger. It wasn't that bad. The lady didn't just spoke Spanish to Andrea. She was just like, this is mine. She seemed to understand She it understood fine. me. Mm -hmm. So she comes around the table. She's... She looks at my little number, which is 93. She's like, oh, this is yours. <laughs> she looks at me and say, the, she asked me, is this your food? I said, I didn't even look at it. I was like, no. <laughs> no. And she comes around the thing. She's like, it's, it yes. is yours. <laughs> He's out here playing musical chairs with the food and stuff. Yeah. Like, doo, 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 doo. I'm like, woman, it's your job. Like, you saw the little tent thing. You know? <laughs> but what this is like, it? you couldn't even have made it a little bit easier for her. Like, yes, that's mine. And just take it. It's her job. I, I mean, I she, she gave me your the burger first. I was like, that's oh, not yeah. mine. <laughs> so I gave it to Andrea. And she's like, oh, that's mine. That's not it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, my goodness. goodness. Okay, we got English and Spanish. The numbers are the same. Like, she should have had that the start. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in Mexico, uh, the numbers like, are different. Or not? <laughs> it's crazy, though, because <laughs> some, something that we... <laughs> oh, my gosh. Something we learned, at least Eric and I learned over the years, that uh, we can't go out to eat together. If it's separate, everything goes fine. However, yeah. every single time, every single time, it's the damnedest thing. It's like a shit Eric show. and I go out to eat somewhere, anywhere together, whether it be through drive through <laughs> in, through drive through eating in, picking up a delivery, or like other people are with us. Things never go smoothly. <laughs> it's just I'm over just here reminiscing about like I'm just here like the time we went to Flamingo Bowl. That's all I have. They, oh, man, these guys are talking about. Well, Eric and I are like. Uh, Eric and I are in a are in a play on the stock market, and uh, the people call you know the eventual success of that stock, uh, tendies. It's slang, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a slang for it. Everyone they just say like, oh, we finally got our tendies. You know, once the stock stock price skyrockets, but we wanted Golden Chick where they sell chicken tenders, and uh, that's their main. Their main attraction, their main dish. So I was thinking about this the whole time, the whole We day. had just finished talking about it. <laughs> and guess what he ordered? <laughs> I ordered tenders. I said I almost said tendies. These guys blew it up. <laughs> These guys really yes. blew it up. Like, oh my gosh, he said tendies. So we're over, they're over here laughing. And then Eric, well, Eric orders first. I Eric first. orders first. Yeah. And he's like, all right, we're going to have a second order. And I wasn't okay, even sure if I wanted to eat. I was like, oh, shit. I guess I'm eating. Alan, do you want anything? You put like, him on the spot. Alan's like, no, I don't want anything. Even though later he's like ordering all this fucking food <laughs> at the bowling alley for like three times the markup. <laughs> but Eric tells her, all right, we're going to have a different order. So we go up uh, after all that stupidity was with these guys. I'm like, oh, I have some tendies and mashies. <laughs> yummy, like, yummy. So <laughs> yummy, yummy. <laughs> So we get up to the window and she tells me the price for Eric's food because he ordered some for him and his wife. And I give her, Eric is like, uh oh. 
I forgot my card. I, I forgot, forgot my, my card. card. So I'm like, oh, fine, I'll take it. I'll take care of it. I give her my card. <laughs> she's, she's like, all right, pays for it. And then she, she gives me the card back. She's like, all right, uh, for the other the other order, <laughs> it'll be this much. And I was like. Let's just give her back the same card. And she looks at me like she's a like, fucking crazy. She looks like she's buffering. <laughs> she's like... She's like, <laughs> she's like what? I'm, okay. She takes it back. I'm like, guys, I look like a fucking crazy <laughs> person. Like, dude, like, he's so like, weird, bro. Like, yeah, like, yeah, bro. Like, oh, man. You're getting your food out, asking her for prom she's or something. Like, <laughs> <sighs> it was so fucking stupid. What a day. You guys are... <laughs> it's uh, just double trouble now huh? I think it all started a few years back I think the first time like for sure for sure we knew this like started happening was uh, we were at Cane's we were in the drive-thru for Cane's and I can't remember what happened we have so many at Cane's it's, it started at Cane's and then it started bleeding everywhere else but uh, I think she says something to me cause I'm in the driver's seat Eric's in the passenger seat and she's the lady, the girl at the in the window. I don't know what she says. She says me tells me the, what the wrong order. What was it? Do you remember? <laughs> yeah, she to, she tells you. It's like when she reads the order back to you, she says it wrong. Oh yeah, she we says still it. drive up forward anyway. <laughs> what? Uh, I don't. I yeah sure. Yeah, that's on your wall. Yeah. Uh, yeah, why not? <laughs> so we go up to the window. Oh no, she says the correct order. She just says it really weird. And I guess she heard us, because like in the drive-thru, you can still kind of hear what the people are saying. <laughs> if you've ever been to Cane's, they have their own little slogan, like, hey, 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 want some chicken today? Oh, she has that. that's yeah. what it was. We start laughing about it before we start driving off to the window, and I guess they heard us. Aw, they're just doing their job. <laughs> I don't this is why they're quitting, Warren. This is why they're quitting left and right. So she opens the window and she's just like in tears laughing. And she, she's like asking me for my food. Or my food. My car. I <laughs> 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 give her the tenders. The tendies. Um, yeah, she gives you the money. <laughs> Thank you. Understood. <laughs> what the fuck just happened? <laughs> oh my gosh. Um. I don't know. Like, it was so long ago, I can hardly remember it. And the amount of times we have, like, shit happen, like, it's so, it all blends together. I think the the memory I remember the most, the memory I remember the most, the one I remember the most would be at Cheddar's. Hmm. And I'm not the talking about... Story. The catapult The takeover. takeover. <laughs> the takeover. That's a good one. It's not, and Jessica, I know you're watching, it's not Delaqueer, it's Daiquiri. <laughs> Oh my god. She was. Uh, well, I'll, I'll, I might as well tell you. Yeah, yeah. Tell all about it. Eventually, she'll she'll probably be on the, on this show to defend herself. <laughs> but uh, she she asks us, me and another friend of mine, Noe, hey, have y'all ever had a strawberry deliqueer? They have it here. We're like, we look at each other like, the fuck is she talking about? Not the deliqueer. Nope. <laughs> she's like, yeah, look through the book. We saw it last time. It was there. And we're like, okay. We literally spent like a good half an hour looking through the book. Like, we order our food. We're still looking. Our food gets there. We're still looking. Like, I don't, I don't see deliqueer. It's worth getting now. <laughs> and it wasn't even Pride Month. So I'm just here like really yeah. confused. <laughs> I'm like, I, do you mean this? Do you mean this? Eventually we reach, do you mean strawberry daiquiri? She's like, Oh, uh -huh. there we go. So she finally gets it, and every since we we haven't let her live it down. Like, hey, never. Y'all have, have any Y'all have any Delacour? That was crazy. years ago. Like, how long ago was that? A good three or four years ago. Three or four years. No. Never, never let, never let, never let her forget. Mm -hmm. We we'll never let her. Uh, that and the toast. <laughs> Para arriba. <laughs> Para centro y dentro. <laughs> no, we gotta tell all these stories with Jessica here. No, nah, she'll have to be here to defend herself, <laughs> even though she won't be able to. <laughs> but the steak over takeover was we go to Cheddar's. I ordered a steak, 16 ounce, I'm just gonna say, because I can't remember how it was. It was probably like 12, because they rarely have to, uh, 16. But I ordered the steak. I don't know what anybody else orders because it doesn't really matter. <laughs> it, honestly, it doesn't. Not this time. At this point, it does. This so eventually, like, we're having a good time. We're eating our food, and we'll, we're not eating our food. We're talking, waiting for our food. Finally, the waitress comes. I'm like, all right, fine. Instead of normally, they'll put out the little 
that little like table leg thing. Like that with the food. Yeah, she physics was that. non-existent today. <laughs> so she has all this food on one side, and then my dish on the other. She grabs my food, my food first, hands it to me, and it causes a whole imbalance in the weight distribution on the plate. So the rest just supernovas the yeah. rest just crashes on the floor <laughs> dinner to the ground <laughs> just dinner like, to the ground there's this massive crash just and then there's like this huge scene everybody everybody that's around like as far as you can see in the restaurant is just like oh what's happening like oh shit I'll have that? that I'll have what they're having <laughs> is it a birthday is it a fiasco especially cause we waited like 20 minutes for our food oh god oh, did you tip uh, well, I did. Yeah, I, was, <laughs> I was about to say that was bad for everybody. I'd be tipping. Yeah, <laughs> like I felt so bad for the lady. She was just like, you could tell she was mortified. And, uh, and then I think uh, was it Jessica? No, I was with. I got there you? late and everyone yeah, looked starving. You were just in your stand. Yeah, you got there late. Like, are you gonna order with me again? <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> Everyone's hungry. I'm just like, hmm, mm, it's pretty good. Yeah. It probably wasn't that good. I don't remember the steak being that good. Anyway, everyone's like, I felt it's so like bad. Victory. She's like super embarrassed. Everyone's like trying not to laugh. Like, <laughs> that's all you hear snickering across. So, um, somebody plays on their phone. Like, finally things are calming down. We're just like kind of like smiling about the whole thing. Like, this rarely happens. Mm-hmm. And then you just hear on someone's phone, wink, wink, wink. <laughs> <laughs> while, the la- while the girl's still there cleaning shit up. Did you see the Seinfeld bass riff? <laughs> no, that, that's crazy. Because, like, usually, uh, like, it's it's cool because, like, you know, you hear these stories. But it's also because, like, I think it's interesting because I know the other, I, I know how the other half probably went. So, like, I worked at a restaurant, but I'm a cook. I mean, I've never been a waiter and I've never had to serve, thank God, because I respect them a lot. I, I have, like, I don't have social anxiety, but God forbid I have to take orders and talk to people face to face. And then if they don't like what they like, imagine dealing with it. God forbid, I don't. But no, yeah, um, it's interesting uh, because I'm pretty sure they didn't fire her, make her pay it out of pocket. But I know who was pretty pissed, and it had to be the guys in the kitchen who had to cook that stuff all over again because that stuff takes time. And it's cheddars, right? It's like a nice mm-hmm. restaurant. It's a scratch kitchen. Yeah, it's a it's, yeah, it's, 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 it's ingredients. You know, you make it from scratch. Bada bing, bada boom. <laughs> but yeah, no, it's 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 pretty. I I remember like. Um, that's like a big pet peeve amongst cooks and not only this but like if you've ever been in a restaurant cooks are dicks like the cooks are the worst like you know the way they talk to servers in the back and forth usually it's chemistry but it's mean chemistry like we know how we talk to each other and it gets snappy back there so i'm pretty sure you had like three cooks who were pretty pissed out that they had to remake and it's like what what was it like three orders four orders went to the ground i didn't i, I didn't make fun of the girl like i was kind of laughing because like like internally because of you know, it's so rare. I was more laughing oh, at the situation man. than her because um, I worked at Whataburger, for those of you who don't know, because I know some people that I know personally don't even know that. I worked at Whataburger in San Antonio for three days, and on my last day, uh, I spilled Coke on a baby. <laughs> 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 it's like, here's your food, and... Uh-oh. Oh, <laughs> better no. that than hot soup, so yeah, dude. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if... I don't think you want to spill anything on a baby. Yeah, you don't want to spill anything on babies. <laughs> I don't know if they got hypothermia or not. Hopefully, I'm sure they kept all their limbs. But <laughs> that's that's funny. Man. That's why I don't I don't like I always have respect for like waiters and stuff. I mean, I want to have my own restaurant in the future anyway. Oh, that'd be crazy. So it's not it's not like fuck the waiters they're awful because I know sometimes actually most of the time I I side with the staff because uh, there's some I've been I've eaten with some awful people. Oh, I just treat them like absolute shit, and then I'm just, like. One thing that kind of bugs me, like some people, um, they always uh, tip the same, whether it's like a twelve dollar bill or a eighty five dollar yeah. bill. And I'm just like, well, I I've always gone like for the per- I I do the percentage thing, because I don't know I, I, that that's part always bugged me, but I'm not gonna give like a five dollar tip to a hundred dollar bill. Mm-hmm. The tip culture in the valley is like really bad mm-hmm. because um, I went up north and everybody tips like crazy too. People tip like there's been tables like well my ex wife was a waitress and she would get to like a hundred bucks for like just like some, like a group of four eating out like they they don't they're not afraid to tip and then I go eat with her at restaurants and I I'd be, I would do the same thing I see I'm being honest like I know where I'm at now <laughs> but like yeah like I would go out and I, I didn't like to tip and one thing she told me was like how would you like it if 
if I was working, I work my ass off for a table of four, and then they give me five bucks, even though it's like an eighty dollar table or whatever. I was like, how would you feel? Like, don't we not? Again. All right, and we're back. We had some technical difficulties. The camera shut off on us. Uh, it overheated, which is weird because it's normally really cold in here. Which uh, why Alan's wearing a jacket. <laughs> jacket. But, uh, a lot, a lot happened uh, <laughs> during this. Well, okay, not a lot happened, but a lot happened to me. <clears throat> oh this yeah, another wadi experience. Fucking stepped on this thing. <laughs> yeah, I kicked himself. it off the wall by accident, and then immediately stepped on one of these. Oh. Either one of the three that are sticking out, or the one that I pulled out. I guess. Yeah. Okay. I don't remember. I think the game on mouse trap over here. Yeah. Holy crap! So now I have a bloody socks. Uh, that I need to get rid of. And it still fucking hurts. <laughs> it's gonna hurt for a while. You the see the nail shot. missing? That's still in your foot. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> I like Iron Man. <laughs> I know it's not because I had to pull the whole thing out. <laughs> uh, yeah, that really, really sucked. But what were we talking about again? Waiters? So, yeah, back to that. Um, pretty much, yeah. Like I remember, like my ex-wife used to say, like, "Oh, you know, how would you feel?" Like, because she was a waitress, she was like, "How would you feel if, if you found out that I served like a table?" With like a hundred fifty dollar order, kind of like this. Yeah, <laughs> and they just went ahead and gave you gave me like a, a ten dollar tip, or they lowballed me. And how would you feel? And I'm like, yeah, I usually bitch about it when I hear about those stories. She's <laughs> like, well, they usually go home and they bitch about it too. So you know, don't be cheap. And ever since then, my my philosophy, especially working in the restaurant industry, I mean. You prepare a plate, you make a meal, you make it like it's your own, and you can only hope that when they take this meal and they serve it, the customer likes it, but not only that, these girls can make a living, because a lot of these waitresses, they're single moms, or they're also, like, I've seen dudes who, like, you know, fresh out of a divorce, living at home with mom again, and this is their bread and butter now, and it's a great industry, the people, most of these people know the genuine term, like, customer service, and I, that's why I've, I, my tipping etiquette changed a lot going up north, especially, like, Working at a very fine restaurant establishment, it, it was really eye opening in regards to that aspect. Yeah. Um, I don't know. That's just always been my mentality. Just be, be good to them, because. Mm -hmm. But also expect good service. If you oh yeah. Know bad service. Fuck them. Yeah. I've I've had some shitty service. Yeah. I don't know. Like. Cut. <laughs> you good? Uh, we already had a massive. Cut. Where's our EMS? <laughs> get, get the first aid bag. <laughs> just throw the bag at you. Yeah, uh, there's nothing to get here. Tums. Just <laughs> tums like a school nurse. Yeah, I had heartburn. I, I've actually never had heartburn. Oh, I live. It's the cold pack. I started getting it recently. Like it sucks. Oh. How's it even feel? Um, it's um, like. Well, for me, um, it's like kind of like an acid reflux thing. Um, I used to eat crazy spicy food, and it feels like a burp, and then it'll come up, and then it feels like just like a fireball coming up. And usually they don't they don't come up to your mouth. Very right? those are the worst too. The ones like you kind of burp into the like burp the acid into your mouth, and you feel it up here in your throat, and it's kind of like it's like it's it's a lot. It's like it's like a fireball coming right up your throat. That's usually the way I can describe it. And yeah, like God forbid you burp it up because it stings. It just hurts. And it most things like this. Why did I flinch? <laughs> did you see me? I flinch. <laughs> oh, I'm, not, I'm not wearing it. That's the best. Alan. <laughs> <laughs> it's like yeah, no. I was like, Shh. oops. Oh no, I'm, I'm fine. <laughs> I'm okay. I'm okay. The guy who survives. No, but um, no, oh, yeah. Um, acid reflux is a pain. Like she said, I I only started experiencing it like two years ago. I'm a big spicy food guy. I love like anything. I love to ground things. It's big solid. spicy. That's. Mess with big spicy, yeah. <laughs> a big um, big Zantac, <laughs> big oh, Zantac. The heartburn's a myth. They're just making money off of it. <laughs> you electrocute yourself oh, after that no. ridiculous idea. No, well, I I think it's heartburn. Like that's the only way I describe it. I don't feel the same that that Alan does, but it's just it's like right, it's at my stomach, and it feels like it's about to like go up, but it stays there, and it's just. I'm burping a lot, and it's just, ugh. Like, I hate anything, any pain that has to do with stomach. Like, feeling nauseated, or just stomach pains. I, I hate them. Like, I can take a headache any day. Like, I'm so used to headaches. Like, oh, okay, oh, it's a headache, whatever. That's what Stom I can't take. Stomach aches, I can't. Stomach, stomach problems is, like, just my middle name. I live with stomach problems. Uh, I won't get into it today. It's a whole 
disgusting story. Let's yeah, better set over it. a couple beers that after so we can forget uh, the whole subject in its entirety. <laughs> I'm I'm the opposite. Like you can handle like headaches and stomach problems, put you down for the count. I'm literally the opposite. I can handle stomach issues, but I can't take headaches. Like mm-hmm. headaches, I'm down for the count because usually they're migraines. So then, uh, I I just can't do anything. I'm like trying. I'll try to take naps. I'm just there massaging my head. Hopefully it's a sinus thing, and I'm just there like yeah. But it, uh, I'm I can't I can't stand it. It's almost as bad as like my hatred for mosquitoes. If I could like give up on headaches, but uh, I know the reason I don't. Uh, Cause, well, you have to worry about like your sugar and all that. Then mm-hmm. you'll get, which is why like for you it's something you do with a lot. Headaches are common, yeah, especially because my sugars can go up or down, and there it's a it's a symptom of both. So it's it's pretty common. So I, I almost always have a headache. I for, didn't know that. For me, it was uh, I don't I don't think I said it on this podcast, but I was uh, did I ever say that I was bulimic for a time? You, on you brushed on it, but that's yeah. Good. I think we just went past it real quick. Yeah, for a good like six months, I couldn't keep any food down, and it was because I, I lost control of uh, I lost control of that function. I couldn't keep any food <clears> down, <throat> so because of that, for how long it did it happened, stomach aches for me are just like oh, I feel like throwing up. I'm just gonna throw up. I don't like. I've never been like can oh. I throw up on command. Just uh, I it'll take I me a little now. bit, but I can. Yeah. <laughs> Some Silver lining, this is a neat way to get out of class. Oh, uh, that's how it started. <laughs> wow. But it was, that, it's a lot more complex than that. It wasn't just me trying to get out of class, but that's a different story that I don't really want to get into. But, yeah, for six months, I couldn't I couldn't keep food down. How do you feel about that? <laughs> <laughs> Would you say it had to do with your childhood? Kinda, because I was a child. You need more <laughs> tweed. Write, write that down, write that down. Tweed. I was a child. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's how I'm able to handle like stomach aches now. They're not they're not even an issue. They're just like, yeah, I don't want to deal with this. Oh, yeah, I'm good. I just, I hate the feeling. Like, I hate feeling nauseated. Like, I was like, ah, like all I have to do is just throw up and I'll feel better. But I hate making myself throw up. Oh, like, it's super gross. Uh, I learned what foods... If I feel like I'm going to throw up, I learned what to eat, so when I do throw up, it doesn't taste as bad. Yeah, in the darkness of all of that, I thought that was pretty impressive. <laughs> in the darkness of all this topic, when you told me that, I was like, well, well that's interesting, actually. <laughs> I, was like, I feel like I'm going to throw up, but I need it, but, so I'll just, I'll eat this. Maybe, like, some peanut butter helps. I, I'd imagine strawberry ice cream wouldn't be that bad of it coming right back up. Or ice cream in general, any ice cream. Brain freeze. Not, not right after you. Like, yeah. Oh, brain freezes. I actually bought a raspa the other day and I hadn't had like a brain freeze in like about three years or anything. Up there, it's just in Iowa, it's fucking cold. You don't need a fucking slushy or anything. It's that. And then down here, the heat's just killer, man. Holy crap. You guys like deal with that all the fucking time? Yeah. It's like pretty bad, yeah. It's like when when the when the sun's out. out. <laughs> yeah, and then I used to wear jackets in this weather. <laughs> Remember high school? Yeah, I remember high school. I remember in elementary, I used to do that. I used to have like this army jacket, and they used to call me heat stroke. Because we'd, be <laughs> we'd be out there running laps, and Alan has the freaking army jacket running around. Yeah, that would be ridiculous. <laughs> no, I was just that kid. I always had this thing about my arms. I didn't like showing my arms, so I'd wear a jacket all the time. And yeah, like running in the it was freaking... Pro- it was about the same for me. Yeah. It wasn't until like senior year where I finally, finally got out of it. But it was like the second half of senior year after that. Which is ironic, because that's when it got cold. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like the winters, yeah. Here, like during the winter, it gets like it well, doesn't get cold. Well, Texas like, cold. The yeah, but everybody cold. in Texas for, like, their balls Everyone's off. like, "Oh, it was cold." Who thought that was, was like cold? in the fifties? Yeah, yeah. We, we get like this more. we get in the negatives. Have you ever grown icicles from your nether regions? <laughs> it's not cold unless it happens. Whoa. It's that. <laughs> the nether regions. <laughs> the nether realm. Anyways. So you've been wanting to talk about something for a while now. No, let's talk about him first. <laughs> what? Him first. All right. No, no, ladies first. <laughs> oh, and then go. What? What? You press? Oh, it says low battery. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, Does it? No, I do it again. Oh, it's no more time. <laughs> yeah, there's plenty of battery. You still got at least another two right. episodes. Eric. Well, I, I want to say something, though. It's a formal apology to Luby's. <laughs> we were ripping oh. up a new one in the last podcast. Yeah, we were beating the dog. <laughs> well, apparently, yeah, I was the only one. I'm the only one that doesn't like Luby's. 
Everyone else was like, what? It was just good. I, mean, I didn't I like, like it. They're like, chicken. oh, it's okay. <laughs> like, it's, not like it's for the memories, Wadi. It brings memories. back nice memories. <laughs> It is not memories. It memories. Is. The memories. It is. Memories. What is the only thing? I, I get the same thing every time I go there, and I call me old fashioned. I like Salisbury steak, frozen, homemade, uh, <laughs> off the griddle, whatever you want to call it. I'll eat it. I like Salisbury steak. Like nine out of ten Salisbury steaks are pretty good. There's probably one that I won't eat. Um, I've never. I, I lied. The nastiest uh, Salisbury steak I've ever eaten was the Hungry Man. It was, you know what a Hungry Man yeah. is. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You, you can only add. Well, so that's much like salt. a pound of fucking <laughs> dog food. Salt. <laughs> I was about to say they actually don't. They're very like low in soda. <laughs> They're, they're what? Just, yeah, it was like fifteen hundred grams. But like, you don't taste the salt. I'm over here drowning it in it. Like, it's just <sighs> uh, hungry men are so like bland. They're like bland. It's like baby food for adults. Um, but yeah, like uh, the uh, actually the Stofers or um, there's another brand that does them. It's like the red, the red box. Um, I, know, uh, I see the them red every box. day. Uh, what, what is it, it? Is it Stofers? Is that Stofers? Stofers Green. Yeah. Um, anyways, oh, yeah. 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 But no, gourmet I, something. Yeah, yeah, gourmet food. So. It's not gourmet at all, but I nice guess. try. False <laughs> advertising. All right. But um, no, yeah. When I would go there, they actually would have like the Salisbury steak there, and it's not that bad. It's just a hamburger patty and gravy. You can't fuck that up, right? Ah. Uh, well. Yeah, hey, I've seen it done. Yeah. Hamburger patty, medium rare. <laughs> Last minute, Luby's was gonna go bankrupt, and then someone swooped in and saved the whole franchise. Why? Uh, no idea. No clue. Maybe Did you find just, it? Is it, it banquet? Banquet. Yeah, it's banquet. 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 Um. Yeah. Banquet. Okay. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We <laughs> slammed the rock on our feet. Um. <laughs> But yeah, no, um, I think that's pretty interesting about that they came back, they made a comeback. Did he say why? Who, who saved, do, do we know who? Uh, as far as I know, it's like a private investor, but... Was he on Shark Tank? Is he from Texas? I think so, yeah. God, he has to be from the Valley he bottle. He specifically one. wanted to keep Brownsville, Arlington, and McAllen. Boobied. Um, I was like, why? <laughs> they wanted to keep them but boobied. Or I, it was up? What? It was oh, so no. No. Come on. Yeah, you step on this now. <laughs> <laughs> it was somewhere around twenty four million that he spent on Luby's just to keep it afloat. Cause like last minute. Why point? would you think that's a good idea? <laughs> just see how sharp it was. You stepped on it. <laughs> I showed you the blood yeah, coming out of my yeah, fucking yeah. foot. I thought that would be enough. <laughs> Is it really on, a question? Why am I doing it? Is it really on a camera? At this you just point? saw. Him. Hmm. <gasps> What a genius. All right. Hmm. But this man was like, ah, oh, you know what? I, I sense these people talking about I, boobies. <laughs> he woke up right. So, sir, um, if you got the idea from this podcast, you're welcome. Uh, because without us... Just looks at this video and I'll show them. <laughs> he woke up sweaty from a dream. Like it was an epiphany. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. Once again, we had more technical difficulties. I don't know where we left off. It's our network. I don't think they, they want this to come out. <laughs> Man, it, it, NBC's trying to knock us down. And then we're not CBS News. <laughs> yeah, that is it's probably it's probably the same people that went up for McAfee. McAfee. Wow. Yeah. Here we go. A, a pretty interesting, <laughs> pretty interesting topic going on. Yeah. Um, this past week, uh, John McAfee was. Uh, well, the going census was that he committed suicide in. Uh, in I believe he was in. Um, Argentina or in Belize? Belize? I believe it was Belize. It was, it was Belize. How are, like, for those that don't know, who is... Okay, so tech giant John McAfee. Um, John, Mac John McAfee is pretty much a software pioneer. And meant to one of, well, I, I wouldn't say one of the best antivirus softwares out there, but certainly one of the leading names in the industry that pretty much... Yeah, you think what antivirus software was one of the yeah, it's one of the first names. things I, I uninstall. Yeah, <laughs> it's I... actually pretty funny. Um, I, he... Kind of, he only he only pretty much pioneered the software, but after that, he went on a lifelong campaign on smearing McAfee. He hated the fact they used his name, and he also um, he used the term bloatware. Pretty much, they make you install a bunch of crap you don't need. Pretty much, you know, kind of. Uh, I mean, it's 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 overdone, I guess, of what was he was trying to say. But he went on a lifelong campaign of pretty much like smearing McAfee after he sold the stakes in the company due to the fact that they used his name, and he realized, yeah, it's a piece of crap software. <laughs> um, the guy was 
very big in regards to like uh, having technological influence in the industry. Uh, he right after he sold McAfee and his stakes in it, he actually um, he committed himself to pretty much um, finding like different um, ways. Um, what is it called? Like um, when you when you find a way to uh, what go off the grid. Well, aside from being one of the biggest people who has gone off the grid and led a very crazy life, like Hunter S. Thompson, he would like to find like back back doors into technology. He oh. found a couple ways to like install malware into Android systems that had never been done before. Yeah, the media kind of shat on him for it because apparently he, I mean, they he sent proof, and they were like, "Well, these phones have malware," and then he was like, "Well, how the fuck do you think I found these like backdoor accesses into the Android system? I had to install my own malware into them," and hence the point. But um. Yeah, he lived a very crazy lifestyle. One of the biggest controversies surrounding him was the fact that he was wanted for the murder of. Um, it was one of it, it was from what I read. It was there was an island, one of the biggest islands in Belize. I didn't even know there was islands in Belize. By the way, <laughs> once again, my crappy geography has led me to a conundrum. But now, yeah, with a grain of salt, people. Um, the only thing I know about Belize is that it's a scent from Old Spice. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. There is an Old Spice scent. Yeah. Uh, but I didn't know that there was an actual island. Well, back to it, uh, there was a murder, um, and I believe that one of the main suspects was him due to the fact that um, he was one of the biggest people I used to hang out with this guy. Um, I forget his name, but I could pull up the article. But it, it was very interesting. Epstein. No. There's, there's a, this is very, it smells very Epstein-y, yeah. this whole thing, because he, he, he wasn't wanted for that, but he was very much like a very, a person of interest and controversy. But yeah, he had, um, in 2012, in April, they went ahead and raided his property in Belize, and um, it was very crazy because the gang suppression unit was the, people, was the department that ran this raid, and they were charging him for the manufacture of illicit drugs, and, um... Yeah, it was the manufacturer of illicit drugs, and then he had possession of unlicensed weapons. Weapons meaning that he also had weapons that he, he like, flame, homemade flamethrowers and shit like this. Like, this guy, like, again, he's a very Tom, Hunter S. Thompson character. And for people who don't know who Hunter S. Thompson is, he was a writer, and he was, like, very much into, like, he was a libertarian. This guy liked to do acid. This guy liked to do drugs. He was a crazy character just like him. And, yeah, it was really crazy. They raided it. They found a lot of, like, evidence. But then the house burned down under suspicious circumstances. Well, they had this guy. Well, he wasn't there. But they were looking for, um, they were looking for just, like, evidence and everything. And it burned down during the investigation. And then um, a couple of years later, he was back in the United States. And then he was arrested for driving under the influence. This guy's, like, a playboy. He loves to drive cars. He loves to be fast. This guy was just a wild story. He wanted to be uh, Tony Stark. <laughs> yeah, this guy essentially pretty much was one of those like high-profile celebrity Starks that we see in real life. Like, you know, Elon Musk can suck it. But yeah, this guy was like a real <laughs> badass. Uh, yeah, um, yeah, it was pretty crazy. He's been arrested multiple times, like causing like, you know, just a ruckus. In every headline we see, this guy loves guns. This guy is like your gun enthusiast. Big guns, loud guns, shoot them all, I don't care. Um, he was bad. Tiger King. <laughs> yeah, very yeah, large, one of those larger than I, uh, larger than the life personalities. But yeah, there was a there was an there was an an associate of his, uh, Gregory Fall, who was a there was a murder in 2012. He was the person who was murdered, and they were they found him with the he was murdered with a gunshot wound, and they were it was in his home. It was in the island of Ambergris Calle, which is one of the biggest islands in Belize. Ambergris Calle. I believe that's a per correct pronunciation. Feel free to correct me <laughs> in the comments. But, um, yeah. And during this investigation, he pretty much was paranoid. He believed that the police were pretty much infringing the investigation, and he was even going to get murdered. So out of paranoia and all this, he actually fled the country. All the while, even the prime minister in Belize was pretty much like, hey, this guy's like just bonkers. He's paranoid. Like, you know, we're not infringing on anything. <laughs> yeah, this guy's a nut. And, like, that's the kind of billionaire I want to be. Yeah, evade every possible charge. I, would, I have. I'm, yeah, so. But uh, in the middle of this, not only that, but there was a lot of word that, uh, well, the United States government had pretty much said he had been, um, he hadn't been filing his taxes. He had been pretty much, uh, he was under tax evasion charges. And they had been trying to get him. Yeah, embezzlement. They had been trying to get him for this for, since like 2014. But you know, um, countries like Belize and Argentina and places like that, they have like no extradition policies. You know, usually they just make you serve time. Mm -hmm. But during this murder, I guess he got wrapped into the whole illegal affairs stuff. And this was one way the government could get, get convinced them to extradite him. So yeah, he um, pretty much, yeah, a lot of controversy. Uh, he most of his life after 2015 during this was going illegally to other countries trying to go ahead and avoid the extradition and he finally I believe he was finally apprehended in 
Yeah, it was um, on December 6th of this past year, he was finally arrested. He was being detained in prison for these previous charges. And it was in that prison that he died, right? Yeah, I believe this is the prison he died. And he had actually faked like two minor heart attacks in hopes of getting an appeal filed. So this guy was really trying to buy time in his last few days. I was even reading another article that in his last few days, he was like, oh, I know. I was, it's, just, it's got these cushions that they kind of like roll. They're, they're rolled. So it's like I'm rolling on an assembly line. <laughs> um, yeah, he was arrested and uh, pretty much he was on, he was being detained under the wrongful death lawsuit and a bunch of other charges and tax evasion charges as well. And while he was in there, they were pretty much trying to extradite him. And that's where it comes to the more recent thing uh, the united i believe that the belize government had finally agreed to extradite him for the tax evasion and everything and i guess the light at the tunnel was pretty much fading and you know like we've said before people in desperation do crazy things and i don't know really what's the consensus maybe he got epstein uh we should i don't want to trademark that but yeah he, he, he probably, got epstein yeah he probably got epstein but the big case i see like oh you know, no he died they had COVID. they had this guy up against <laughs> the wall COVID. A lot of the people, a lot of things that people don't know about is also he was a he had his own cryptocurrency, uh, cryptocurrency like company agency. Don't, don't tell me it's Shiba Coin. No, it's, it's Shiba not Shiba Inu. Coin. Oh, no. But it's something just as absurd like that. And the thing is, like he was already being under investigation from the SEC. Oh, yeah. did you uh, did you guys hear about uh, Mark Cuban? What about Mark Cuban? Uh, he invested heavily in this coin uh, called Titan. And he was t- he put people on he put on uh, Twitter like oh like Titan yeah whatever, and then uh, he lost pretty much everything, like in a matter of hours it went from like over sixty dollars to less than a penny, and oh, it's my human baby. Yeah. And he was like, uh, let me see if I can find the tweet, but he was saying things like yeah I mean if anything I'm lucky I got out because he was a uh, it was a uh, Titan and another another coin that just fucking bombed. Like that thing died out, and people lost millions of dollars. Uh, I mean, so Mark Cuban did lose money too. It, uh, he got out of another, like, similar situation, like around the same time. But uh, yeah, people were pissed. And then it was funny because now Mark Cuban was uh, saying things like, "Oh, we need, we need regulation in these markets and all this crap," saying like. Which is funny because, like, really? Like, now? It's just interesting. Like, that's the main selling point of, like, crypto. The fact of its irregular market and everything. That's what makes it so appealing to everybody. Because it, it's like, uh, like Eric told me back when I was thinking about investing in Ethereum. Yeah, I know, right? Um, How's it going now, jackass? Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> Say what you want. I, I believe in some of these cryptocurrencies. And, uh, but, yeah, the market fluctuates like crazy. It's more like, when are you going to sell? But, like, exactly, like, what time of the day are you going to sell? Because this thing bounces up and forth, back to side, every fucking moment. It's... No, I'm not a financial advisor. In fact, as a matter of fact, I'm, I'm relatively new to this. I'm broke. Just, <laughs> don't take my word on it. But when it comes to cryptocurrencies, I'm not entirely sure what I would buy into because first off, it's super volatile. Like at any point it could either just go up or go down. Mm-hmm. You don't know. Yeah. And like for at least for me, I still need to do my own due diligence. I need to do my own research about what what's real and what's not. If cause, and also that comes that leads to the next point. There is so there are so many scams, so freaking many that people. Um, I've been looking things up, saying, and I've been seeing things like some coins. People say it's worth so much, and then once they get a certain amount, scalped, they disappear. Mm-hmm. Like the coin no longer exists, and everyone's like, "Hey, where's my my money? You said yeah. it was gonna go up. You said I was gonna get this much ROI, return on investment, uh, and they just." disappear there's they, it's like the, it never existed and uh that it, it makes me really really like hmm i mean bitcoin i don't want to say it's well there's no such thing as safe when it comes to investing you, get, you guys ever heard Period. of quadriga like there was this huge canadian like cryptocurrency firm called quadriga and it was it was run by this uh individual name of yeah, his name was Gerald Cotton, and what pretty much happened, uh, Quadriga was pretty much like, he opened up a, his own portfolio, I don't know what, like, a coin exchange program he was using, but he opened up a portfolio within it, and then what he did was, like, they pretty much, uh, what you would do was, uh, you would you would give Quadriga your money, and Quadriga would buy, like, crypto for you, and then whenever you needed crypto, the understanding was, like, 
it was even very sketchy in their in their like terms of service. They were like, "Well, the minute you decide to pull out, you need to give us like a twenty four hour like time in advance, and then like our one of our like main one of our main people will meet you and give you your money in cash." Like it didn't even seem like a legitimate transaction. And but what he was doing was pretty much he made like their own their own like he was using like a program to buy like crypto, and then he had invented his own program for customers to use so they could buy crypto from him. So what he ended up doing was. He would he was selling crypto and to make it look like he was making profits he was creating fake accounts buying crypto from himself using their own currency they were using so it was looking like it was generating revenue and all in all the people who were buying crypto what he bought with his portfolio at the end when he told everybody okay well we're shutting down we'll give everybody their money back and then he disappeared and the company was like well fuck him like we have it we have the account right and then they were like well we have we know the account but we don't have the password to the portfolio. And just like that, Gerald Cotton disappeared into thin air, and then he was caught. He was found two months later, like in some like third world country. I think it was India. I don't mean to say India is a third world country, but like he was found in India, like a very a much bigger country. Very. The point was, he was found there, and then as he was getting arrested and taken out, like getting extradited, he died of a heart attack. And the consensus is that he was rich enough to fake a heart attack, and he probably got a fake death certificate because in India right now there's a growing trend of like fake death certificates being issued out. So they oh, think this shit. guy faked his death, ran out with billions in crypto, and scammed, like, I think it was like, what, like one third of Canadians invested in using that program because it just, he had a really good PR team. Like it was, it was kind of like the fire festival of cryptocurrency <laughs> exchanges, if I could say. And yeah, oh, Quadriga, no. you guys ever want to look it up? It was like a big Canadian scam. Well, there's, there's plenty of those. And it's, yeah, it goes to full circle. Like, yeah. he pulled the jar rule. Yeah. I don't know, I don't know how many of these things I've seen like, oh, uh, fucking like within a year you'll see like your investment go up and like fucking thousands of a percent like it's insane I've seen like there I've seen some of them like oh it goes up millions thousands of percent millions of percent like how the fuck do people buy this shit I like think, it, yeah. it like you don't even need to do a lot of like uh, in, uh, research to see like really if I put a dollar like let's say I put a hundred dollars into this into this coin they're promising you you'll be a millionaire by the end of the year. Like, seriously? Like, there's no way you can promise that sort of shit. Yeah, no, definitely. People aren't patient. Yeah. The idea is it happened so, once, it'll happen again, right? They think, like, it boomed once. Well, it comes, like, with, um, like I mentioned earlier, Eric and I are part of this, uh, like, we invested in <laughs> AMC, is the one that's supposedly supposed to boom, go crazy. Uh, a lot of people, like, it's been a back and forth for months, uh, I bought it in March, but this has been going on since January, since a lot before. You know, the we got, uh, same thing for GameStop. It's, it's the same situation. <laughs> GameStop's just a little bit further along. Wall Street bets. Yeah. yeah um, and like I said, there's been a long fight, and it can still go on, go on for a few more months. It's very volatile. We don't know if uh, what is called the short squeeze is this giant spike that's going to happen. If it's going to happen next week the week after or months from now I know it's been a while but I was gonna wait for something relevant but it might be dead I don't know it didn't do it oh there it goes there never mind it's that, not is dead. it working <laughs> <laughs> no oh my god uh, <laughs> but anyway uh, like we don't know if it's gonna happen this week next week uh, or it can happen this week it's already Friday but um, or months from now it could happen in August we just know it, it can happen at any point. Mm. But a lot of people that bought in, uh, because I bought it at $9 and it's at $60 right now, which is insane. And I only put in $100. And I'm, I was like, this is crazy, but it's it supposed to go higher. Mm. <clears throat> but a lot of people are getting upset because they bought in thinking it was going to happen tomorrow. Oh, yeah. It's going to happen next week. It's gonna happen now. It's a waiting game, yeah. Yeah, it's a waiting game, but a lot of people, I, I guess they, they either didn't but, do their own research. Well, they obviously didn't do their own research, but or somebody told them it's gonna happen now. It's gonna happen next week. That's what. That's why I don't like saying it's gonna happen next week. It's gonna happen this th this time because I can't say this is the first time something like this has ever happened on this kind of scale in the history yeah, of the New York Stock Exchange. Yeah, it's gonna be the last because they're gonna. You already know they're gonna implement laws and shit to make sure this. They've already be, started this week. They've already started, but it's past Wednesday. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. People are getting upset because nobody knows, and the the fact that it hasn't happened yet is pissing people off. And 
I, I think some people are threatening to sell, but at the same time, why would you sell now? Because you're only going to yeah. get pennies in return. And if they sell, does it go up for you? No. No? It goes down. Hmm. If, like, if a lot stocks. of people start selling, if a lot of it's, it, it, stocks is supply and demand. If they're, like, there's only a certain amount of stocks, typically. This so if more people sp- buy, it becomes more. You know, if, more, if there's more demand and less supply, it goes up. Price goes up. If there's less supply, or there's more supply and less demand, people don't want it, they're going to sell it, it's going to go down. It's, it's very, very dumbed down. Very dumbed down. Like I said, I've told a lot of people, like, stock markets are a pretty good way to make money if you can do your research on basically everything, but it's super, super boring. You have to do your homework. Yeah, this guy's telling me about fiscal reports and stuff like that, and I'm like, how do you see the reading? Sure <laughs> you got to look at all that stuff every quarter, just like, mm, how they do, how they do. What is it that you look at the, the yearly earning report and stuff like that? It's, it's, it's quarterly. A quarterly. Quarterly. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Quarterly. And I'm like, huh, and you just like sit there going through data. He's like, well, that's the money, man. That's how you know what to do. But yeah, when it comes to this kind of stuff, you, you got you to gotta do your own research. Well, there's plenty of ways to make money in the market, but if you're trading stocks, it's not investing. Yeah. The, the best way to make wealth in the stock market is transferring the money from the impatient to the patient. That's what uh, Warren Buffett said, right? Uh, the stock market is a tool designed to transfer wealth from the impatient to the patient. Yeah, just like what you said. Uh, because the impatient, they just lose money, and the people who are waiting, to, like... Uh, there's another stock. I don't think I want to say it, really, because I'm not. Uh, I, I don't want to say sound like I'm telling people invest in this one. But there's another one that we are that Eric uh, and I are in. Uh, uh, I wouldn't say it because they're still in a legal battle. But. Yeah, but uh, that's pretty much something that we're waiting years on. Like we put money into that, I forget to see it in there. But that's how it was like, 15 years ago. That's how it you, still is. You buy something and you have to wait. For 10 years yeah like minimum if, like if anything uh like what's happening now with amc and gamestop we're seeing like changes of dollars a day yeah. like normally it's just like last year when i first started uh 15 up gain was a fucking win to me <laughs> everyone's like complaining about moving up 10 and that's it i'm like what i see this as an absolute win that's a, yeah, like, a win, nowadays guys. you're seeing things move like tens of dollars in a day but normally it's just like day you'll go up a few like maybe maybe a dollar or go down maybe a dollar and that's it it's normally it's really really boring it's just like this is the first time something like this has happened it's huge yeah but it because i used to swing trade a lot i would buy i would buy on friday and sell on monday and in between that i would just do my research and that's it yeah there you go but yeah it's just impatient people when it comes to either stocks or are cryptocurrencies they don't want to do their research so they'll either lose money on something uh, that was probably would have been obvious if they had like these uh, promises of huge returns yeah. it's kind of unrealistic so I don't know it's some, it's been fun <laughs> why do that to me <laughs> how does it feel uh. how does it feel I get I get phantom like electroshock therapy. I get phantom shock like sometimes. <laughs> she gets phantom shock. <laughs> yeah, like I was reaching for my my drink earlier today and I like felt the phantom shock and I was like, oh oh. Next time she takes a sip. Yeah, everybody thought I, I was shitting and I said I felt funny. <laughs> and we were it. taking a break. I just she already took the collar off and I was like, ah, and she was like, ah, oh, wait, I'm oh, having off. <laughs> yeah. It's oh. oh man, I'm not looking forward to work. <laughs> Yeah, well, we might, like either. All right, we'll decide. When do we decide who's gonna wear it next? You I'll next. wear it next. I'll, I'll bump it up to thirty-five. But you'd have to bump it up twenty more. I want fifty-five. Good. 55. I like that. Yeah. The next person has to take it up. We gotta bump it. There right, you go. I'll be at level fifty-five. <laughs> the sparks and the, the little the light, the light flashes. Your your whole like side is gonna be twitching like <sighs> yeah uh, they I showed them uh, how did I put it at 85 yeah and pretty much this side this of my face just went like, like mm. uh... so <laughs> that's gonna be fun <clears throat> I feel like okay I feel like you guys are gonna go crazy <laughs> but once I'm worrying it it'll be like <laughs> maybe not no, you... like a safety hazard <laughs> mm-hmm. that's a lot 
Mm. Mm. Remember when he was doing it, like practicing, and it was like his muscle was like my muscle was like bold, you know. <laughs> it's it, it tickles. No, it doesn't. Tickle. We, we gotta pick a, a subject where he can go off the rails, and we just uh, 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 back on track. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, what subject would drive me crazy? Uh, I don't know. Probably Aliens. Not. No, I got nothing. <laughs> I don't like. I'm. I can be a pretty passionate person if I'm like really into something. Oh, let's go so. into religion. No. <laughs> Cancel. Not really. Cancel. 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 Boom. Cancel. No, no. I don't know. Like, what would be a topic to get me riled up on this? I don't, I don't know about a specific topic, but I know Wadi likes to win arguments. Like, oh no, 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 no! It's right. not, it's not an art. It's, okay, <laughs> OJ didn't do it. You know, give me that thing. Here's the thing: the person, per- the person uh, to lose an argument is the one that thinks there's a, there's something to win. I didn't. Even, I, I know. I felt that. The person you automatically lose an argument if you think there's anything to win. What you do is you just keep poking buttons. Keep pushing those buttons, like this one? and you'll never, you'll, you'll always end up on top, even though there's nothing to come up on top of. There's never an, an- it's, and it's always on the one that there is no right or wrong answer. <laughs> I just, I realized I haven't touched it all fucking day, and I'm like, oh, I want to do it after they do it. I haven't, I haven't done it. I haven't done it, well, but I'm not gonna it do right it. On keep your it left. by you. No, so, like, I need to see you present. <laughs> This oh, is good. good. Fun. The experience. best shocks come from the guy who got shocked the best, so I'll probably uh, decide why not right now, though. Mm. <laughs> That's good. Kinda... it off. Oh, man, it's the element of surprise here, too. So now you can't. I didn't do that to you. <laughs> okay, alright. Alright, leave it on the table. Yes. Let's have the. You know, have it so the camera can see it, so okay. everyone knows. Okay, right in between the monsters. There you go. There we yeah, go. But there you like, go. Now. But yeah, like uh, back to McAfee. Yeah, a big thing that's actually pretty crazy about him is the fact that the reason people are actually saying that he might be Epstein or he might have gotten Epstein, don't trademark me on that. But, stop uh, saying stop it. Saying it. <laughs> All right. The biggest. <laughs> <laughs> he just He just me. Me. Yeah, I'm over here. He's like, oh. I'm like Pavlov's dog over here. But no, uh, <laughs> They're saying the, he had a lot of beefs with like the tech industry. This guy was going left and right over some of the biggest names in the industry. Really? One of them, Apple, due to the fact like they pre-install software, he pretty much went to the point saying like he told people don't use phones, don't use smartphones. They track you. Way before probably Snowden was. I mean, if you guys don't know who Snowden was, it's like a whole thing. But Edward Snowden. Yeah, Edward Snowden. Another kind of worms yeah, right there. Yeah, uh, like... NSA analysts pretty much knew from the start that there was like a program that spied on our phone calls uh, back in what 2012, around that era, 2014. Pretty much admitted it. Then Verizon did. That AT and T admitted, yeah, we do because this guy's saying so. We'd rather save face now than do it later. So yeah, um, pretty much yeah, same thing. John McAfee was well aware that you know, big government was like you know listening on your phone calls. And he went on a campaign and, you know, pretty much tell people, aside from that, he also, I don't even know if you guys knew this, but for a while, the U.S. military used McAfee antivirus for their programs and stuff. And he used to laugh at that. He's like, that's pretty funny that they decided to use that because it's complete shit. <laughs> and then it was actually, I think it was like around 2016, there was a big anti, there was a big virus that went around. It was actually, some people say it came from China. Others say it came from a small um, Patriot group in North Korea but they were hackers and they released this virus called GhostNet oh. GhostNet infected like over 60% or 65% of like government computers around the world we even had the Dalai Lama's computers getting hacked by this virus Man. and you know what this virus did you know what you know what it did it pretty much it preyed on computers where people pretty much kept it was like government admin one and the password was like password and this is all the virus did. It just pretty much targeted those computers. And yeah, a couple, uh, yeah, they found out that a, actually a lot of computers in the White House pretty much use password as their admin. Not anymore, I mean, for obvious reasons. But yeah, he, Ma- John McAfee was pretty much saying like, you know, these there's so many exploitations that could be done on multiple softwares around the world because they're using lackluster software, including yeah, anything, the one I started with. If anything, if you can use for every account you have, try to use a different password. Because mm-hmm. if you use one password for everything, uh, you, you, they got into everything. Just get into one thing. Yeah. And they know one. They got. They know it all. Mm-hmm. So always try to get, like, <laughs> what 
Yeah, that was impressive for everything. <laughs> no. I don't know. Okay, you're not sure. sure. So, like, pretty much, yeah, his wife came out saying, like, yeah, like, he had a lot of big beefs with a bunch of tech industry giants, and the United States government, obviously, I mean, if you don't know, Beef like, you know. how yeah. would you speak out about this? Would it be, like, on the little intercom thing? Like, what, like, uh, iOS sucks butts. <laughs> <laughs> this guy, this, from what I've seen, they used to invite him to all, like, the big events. And they used to ask him about, like, expos. And then yeah. this guy would take his time, like, iOS sucks, everything sucks, stop using computers. Like, and like <laughs> yeah, and they were like, come on, get him out of here, get that guy out of here. No, but yeah, that's what he would do. And, and they would pay big money to put you on the spot like that, mm-hmm. too. So. I mean, is it really, like, I don't, personally, I've never really thought of that kind of stuff. Like, people that say that kind of things is crazy. Because, I mean, yeah, like, whether it's true or not, you know, there's, do your own research or whatever. Mm-hmm. But, um... The reason I don't think it's too outlandish is because, uh, I mean, time and time again, we've seen companies are real huge proponents of it's better to ask for forgiveness than to ask for permission. Mm-hmm. So, like, they're gonna they're gonna take our our data. They're gonna take everything they can from us, and then what even whether it's controversial or not, and then they'll just be like. Mm. To be fair, we never look at the terms of agreement. I, w- I was about to say. <laughs> yeah. so. um, I was reading an article that said that pretty much Apple pioneered that the bulletproof terms of service agreement. That it was within Apple, like that it that we come to know the modern day terms of agreement, which is like we give them all this shit, they won't read it. Mm-hmm. Well, Apple pretty much captivated on that. I think. Um, I, I might be wrong about this, but I remember. I think I remember somebody's uh, one company uh, had some service. The service doesn't really matter, but in their terms of service, somewhere in there was like, if you read this, the show reward. it to us, and here's a cash reward. Yeah, that's like. And it was, and it wasn't until years later yeah. that somebody actually cashed it in, and it was legit. It was like an old lady too, yeah. like some sixty-eight year old. I guess she was like Alabama. She's like, hey, I read this. Like, I guess she was ooh. bored because I've done it too. Like I'll, like whenever I buy a new car. I'm always looking at the whenever there's nothing to do. I'm li- I grab the manual and I just start reading it. Me too. Yeah. I love reading every manual that I get. I love them. That reminds me of a funny story <laughs> about me. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he was gonna do it. <laughs> that reminds me of a funny story of an April Fool's joke that BMW put out an ad. Oh, uh, we'll walk in and we'll give you a free BMW, and it was on April Fool's, like <laughs> April first. No, of course. And <laughs> it worked that way. Well. She doesn't have it tight enough. It was like hanging out. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I heard it so, like. That one went. No one, no one came by or into the, the dealership except for one woman, and she actually like went just for laughs. And they're like, "Oh, okay, here." <laughs> no shit. She's like, "Holy shit!" <laughs> Yeah. No shit. Yeah, Damn. You know. At least it was like that Hooters uh, restaurant that they had like a competition. And she, that manager was like, whoever gets the most like sales, you get a Toyota. And then the one chick won. She's like, oh, I got a Toyota. And she goes to the parking lot. It's like a Toyota. Yeah. So she sued the living shit out of the <laughs> out of the Hooters, and they made the owner get her a Toyota <laughs> back in court. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, God damn! Like, isn't that like controversial as fuck? He said BMW did that. BMW. Oh, I thought it'd be like oh yeah. new, new feature. We have turn signals. I heard now. like that BMWs like, have like equity on them, so like the longer you have one in good condition, you can take it back and they'll trade it and they'll give you a newer one. Or fuck one. no. I heard I had a friend who had a BMW way too young to have a BMW. Like I didn't have it for long either. Should I have a friend with a BMW? No, He's the no. worst fucking, the worst fucking stories of that thing. Yeah, dude. You, you sh- if you're in your like twenties and like you you got that as like your second car and you don't have the money to repair it, you have no business getting a car like that. That's like buy it now, breaks later. I'm fucked. All right, it was a nice piece of like it's a nice paperweight. <laughs> I'm not even sure. Like, let's say I become a billionaire tomorrow. I don't even know how much I would really want an exotic car like one of those expensive ones because they break. It's upgraded. quick. I mean, they're nice to have, but like say like a Lambo. They're not practical. They're really uncomfortable after a while. Like they're not daily drivers either. Mm-hmm. They're pretty much just like, all right, today it's like a Friday night, Saturday night sort of thing where you want to show off. Mm-hmm. You drive it then, Imagine. but every other day, like, just take your car, take your Prius, your fucking Prius. I'm not gonna buy a Prius. Fuck a Prius. Take a take a Corolla Fence. out or something. No, full yeah, offense. Fuck Priuses. Yeah. No, there's better there's better hybrids. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> You're just disagreeing with them. <laughs> yeah, I was like, uh, I was trying Matt, to be. <laughs> <fail>. <laughs> Those things are hideous. 
I was about to say, did, did you do you guys know about the Lamborghini? Like, uh, they were once asked, like, well, why don't you guys ever film commercials, or why is there not like a Lamborghini commercial we see on TV? What do they need it? No, they said they actually responded. I'm pretty sure, like, in a oh yeah, like they're, they're like, like it's because our customers aren't sitting at home watching TV. Like, our, <laughs> our customers got they're money. Not coach yeah, they're not coming. <laughs> cook at the meatball, but no, <laughs> like, no, no. <laughs> no. cancel. Oh man, we just got canceled by Italy. <laughs> Uh, now we can't even get Ferraris. Pretty sure. But no, uh, yeah, they, that's pretty much that was their response, and I've always found that really funny because yeah, like Bruce Wayne ain't at home watching TV. Like, you know, Bruce Wayne driving the lap. Bruce Wayne doesn't exist. <laughs> He's a He's fictional character. I <laughs> could like rock my world. Like, <laughs> so what do you mean? Like, millionaire <laughs> philanthropist Bruce Wayne, like Gotham, like Gotham, New York. Gotham, New York. Yeah, I just like gave it a place on the map. My geography, once again, people. No, oh, man. You know, cue the, the fucking ge- geography. Geography? God damn. <laughs> it's good, it's good, it's good. It's been a long day. I think I lost too much like blood. Like a jujitsu. <laughs> ge- <laughs> geography. Geography. Isn't oh. ghee like a kind of sauce or something like that? Like, like an Asian sauce? I don't want to say. Like a grease? I, like in Greece? Like in the movie? Don't even get me started like Grease the movie. Grease Lightning. That's a, yeah, that's like on my hit list after after a battleship. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what do you think of Grease? What's, what's your Okay, so to be what's fair, your beef? Because we'll have I don't like musicals. i I don't like musicals, the whole song and dance routine. I think it's overplayed. It's kind of ironic because he's dressing like a I know. Greaser right I mean, now. What's the guy's name? Like Danio or what I don't know. No. Book him Dano. <laughs> oh. Anyways, um John Travolta. Travolta. There you go. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh not gonna do the Forrest Gump John Travolta impression but uh no um the whole ending right they get it like in what like they the, get in the car they, they get in the car and they fly it's away the best Italian movie ever so, <laughs> yes. it's a cinematic am movie. I the only brother the only person that has a gripe with that whole ending yeah like, it's really stupid yeah movie. it's ridiculous I like I, I, I don't like that the whole like uh the greasers dancing on the bleacher shit is pretty lame in my opinion um, yeah, like what you almost <laughs> elbowed me in the face. Are they like the toughest like biker group? Are they supposed to be Nothing's like the? Not... It's on. No. <laughs> Are they supposed to be like the tough boys of the school? Cause like singing around in skinny jeans, like when, like dancing around holding your boys. I want to say like the troublemaker. Dancing yeah. around holding your boys. Yeah, dancing around holding your boys like on the bleachers. Hey, admit it, that, that would make high school a lot more interesting though. Wait, like yeah, like a whole high school musical like like gang. Yeah. Like, like everyone's eating food and then just fucking you see somebody jump on the table you're like all right. I mean, if I, get food, it, I was eating that. Yeah, dang, if I'm like in a switchblade fight, I just hope the next guy takes it more serious than I do. Like, do you... smooth daddy o. Like, no, dude. Like, that's that's not how any of this works. And then yeah, it's kind of like you know, it just it just seems so. I don't know. I just there's I a lot of movies can't... that don't deserve the hype they get. Yeah, it's, it, I just don't. I don't. I don't High get the vibe. School? Never seen one. It's like a You've cult. never seen one? Me never. neither. Never seen one. I was, we saw, didn't we see them like in junior high or elementary? I don't remember. Like they played them at school or something? I, I, I they don't They would play them so. at, they, I had my fair share of schools that would play them nonstop, but I would either you get tired walk of out. <laughs> well, schools always tended to play the same movie. I don't know if you've seen uh, Freedom Riders with uh, Selma Hayek. How can I teach these kids? Oh, was it Selma Hayek? Either Selma Hayek or Sandra Bullock. Or who it's it? neither of it's those neither of them. I, it's, it's the lookalike of Sandra Bullock. Yeah, it's a fucking. Uh, Winona Ryder? No. Winona Ryder? Is that no. I think no, that's not her. What? Ah. It's killing me now. But They're like yeah, naming all sorts of movies I've never seen. I'm supposed to It's be only like one movie we're just naming. Then why did you say a name? <laughs> <laughs> it's no, not those two. Know. Who is it? Yeah, we're just naming females I, from the nineties. I always forget. Hillary Swain. Hillary I always Swain. Her, forget oh, her Hillary name. Dank. I always forget her name. <laughs> I don't know how you confused her with. I don't know. Like it's her, just her. I forget her name. No, she does. She doesn't. She doesn't. Imagine doesn't. Doesn't. how loud that school must be with all the. Like I said, Sandra dancing. Bullock knowing full well wasn't her. But anyway, with uh, you haven't seen Freedom Riders with Hillary Swain. No, but he has they, him and Jerry. Yeah, it's the whole movies. like, oh, yeah. I'm a, a white teacher goes to this this ghetto school and I'm gonna teach these kids about the Holocaust. I'm gonna teach these kids. It's like, like stand and deliver. She's like, you're gang. See, but stand and shit. deliver delivered it better. You know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Every your time, gangs ain't shit. Y'all heard of Hitler? Every time you oh, mess but, up on Call of Duty, <laughs> like a one on one, an easy like correction, and be like, come on, Alan, two plus two. 
Come on. Good musical. What, what's a good musical I like? Don't change the subject. <laughs> Footloose. No. You know, uh, no. is Roadhouse a musical? <laughs> no. no, it's not. No. no. It's Ro- I've never seen Roadhouse either. Um, but Footloose? Yeah, I guess. What? That's Kevin Bacon? I mean, the original. Kevin Bacon, you know. Well, who watches the remake? Mm. Mm. <laughs> My mom. <laughs> it's so dreamy. No, but it's... Uh, Kevin Bacon, yeah, dude. Kevin Bacon. Um, if you're watching this, Kevin Bacon, you're great. You're not. <laughs> uh, he's, he's not. Sure he's not. Uh, one can be hopeful, right? But yeah, um, yeah. No, Footloose. Probably, I guess I would say Footloose. Like the whole. How about any of the Disney movies? Um. So check this out. Um, my daughter watches like every Disney movie under the sun, but I try to stick to Pixar because I've noticed the only Pixar movie where they sing it is Moana. And I, I mean, that's my daughter's favorite, but I'm just, <laughs> I'm just so about as sick and tired of Moana as, as much as a dad could be. But I watch it for my kid, and um, I can say, yeah, I like Pixar movies, and I, I guess Moana is my only favorite. It's a good musical. Movie. Dwayne it's the Rock not, Johnson. Yeah, you got House. Dwayne the Rock Johnson. The guy has range. He's like Wishbone. Like, yeah. Like, the dog. Yeah, d- dude, Wishbone. Come on. That's what I was. I, you're the only other person that I know that knows who Wishbone is. Yeah. Every other time I brought out, like, what's the story, of Wishbone? And everybody's yeah. like, what the hell are you talking about? Wishbone, dude. With the yeah. little circle on his. Yeah. Wishbone's the shit. Fuck you guys. Yeah, yeah the Target it, mascot? It's a no. thing. Wishbone. Uh, Wishbone, yeah. the dog with range. He's like a poet. He's like a fighter. He's like Shakespeare. Once. He's a character in every book, basically. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. I'll put up a picture on it. If you're watching this, Wishbone, no, it's like it's a dog. He's dude. dead. He's, he's yeah, dead. Well, one of them is. No, it's just, How is oh, the, your place is haunted. Why is oh, the... Oh, my God. Where did that come movie? from? I am actually have my feet right here because I've kicked the camera more than once. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, no. You've only told us once. <laughs> I'll be like chilling and I feel like oh. <laughs> oh um, I feel like that thing's starting to work only selectively. But um uh, because I think sometimes it sits more like more loose. Tighten it up. Tighten no, up. Like, you want me to put it in my neck? That's how it's supposed that's to be. No, it's work. you want okay, that's that's, that's how I'm gonna wear it. it. Oh well it is. Let's rob is like a music. And if Wadi jumped off a bridge, would you do <laughs> You see? You see? Yes, because That's you're... so unfair, dude. Uh, you have already pressed it more times on me than you have with That Tyler. is not true. Uh, I'm going to count. Do it. Do Go it ahead count. and count. Do that is count. not true. If anything, add plus one for the one that we did off camera. We're going to start eat... having a counter on the add screen. Add a counter, like right here, yeah. on the bottom right there. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh. Right here. Oh. You like, just gave oh, me more editing like, work. Like right here. You're going to Mike Wazowski me, like, come <laughs> yeah. out with the counter. Mama, I'm on a podcast. I I'll put it in front of his face. <laughs> but no, yeah. Uh, musicals. I hate them. <laughs> Ever since I was a boy, I hated them. No, but yeah, musicals. Um, definitely, like... I think another overrated movie. Like, it's, it's not even a musical, but Titanic. Mama Mia. Oh, t- Titanic? I've never well, I haven't seen even it. seen Mamma Mia. I don't have the time to I've watch never it. Seen You've never seen movie. Titanic? I don't have the time. It's, it's a long it's movie. Long. It's, it's it did long. on your bus ride. No, <laughs> you know, I, you, you know cried along with that dude you sat with. You could watch Avatar during um, Titanic, and that's Avatar's because I have so one. much to say about Avatar. Avatar's another unobtainium. I'm coming for you. That's ridiculous. <laughs> unobtainium. Unobtainium. Who wrote that? Who wrote that? Like, I would have accepted raritanium. Unobtainium? Yeah, unobtainium. <laughs> this was, this had to have been during like the writer's block of 2014. Like they were <laughs> just like. like can't. They, it was like Unobtainium was like the placeholder for the material and, and they just like, fucking left it there let's go with this sounds good Sam Worthington was like yeah yeah I can do it <laughs> uh, somebody asked me think of Avatar do you remember anything from it do you remember anybody's name Sam uh, Worthington is in it. The girl that's, <laughs> that's the... I don't know what her name is. She's from... <laughs> Zoe Sorry, Saldana. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I'm, not asking about, yeah. I'm not asking about the actors. The oh, What's the actors. character's oh, name? The characters. I know two. I know at least one. Jork. <laughs> you only know, she only knows <laughs> that because of a certain YouTube it's channel that I'm a fan of as Jake. well. But Surely. Is it Sully? Jake Sully. Sully? There's like Take two so more movies so, yeah. that will probably be finished by the time we're all dead. <laughs> but yeah, I heard that like uh, the first Avatar took like an entire server farm, like unseen. Like nobody's ever seen a server farm like this to like actually put together the movie and oh, I guess dude. like render it. So they said that the next one's supposed to be underwater and 
the reason it's taken so long is because he's waiting for the technology to be perfected so he can make the best movie. So it's not even like a waiting That's game. the best excuse I've yes. ever heard. Because yeah. I have a movie that if it would have waited, it would have been amazing. What he knows what I'm that? talking about. Hoodwinked. Oh. Hoodwinked. It had you know, Anne Hathaway. It had so many good... Kronk. Uh, <laughs> I don't even know his name. It's, uh, what's his name? Patrick Warburton. Patrick Warburton. I love him so much. He's in the he's Enterprise in a, guy. Fucking, he's in Rules of Engagement. Andy Dick, movie. was it? Andy Dick is in that? He was Andy Buddy from worst. Seinfeld. He doesn't even know names anymore. Why? <laughs> he's just like, saying today's right just, today's today's a fever just, dream of names. Who played the rabbit? I don't know, but... Eminem. No, I'm gonna no. check the right <laughs> Eminem. Hoodwinked. Hi. Hoodwinked was such a great movie. Where's my grandma? Was, no one asked for it, but it was a really likable movie. Yes! Um, it was... It spawned a sequel, didn't it? It did. Yeah. And the sequel... Uh, sequel. It, 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 it. I actually enjoyed it. It, it had, Hathaway. like, the ass-kicking Red Riding Hood, and then, like... That was both of them. Well, like, the first one. Like, I haven't seen the second one. I'm not coming back for round two of uh, garbage. <laughs> <laughs> Anne Hathaway, Glenn Close, Patrick Warburton, Jim Belushi. Jim Belushi's in there? Who was he? The fucking the woodsman. Uh, really? Yeah. And the German wow. woodsman. I didn't know he had uh, Exhibit was in there. <laughs> well, fucking, I don't remember <laughs> Exhibit. Andy Dick, yeah. Andy Dick. There yeah. you go. Boingo, hey, the rabbit. Dick. Yeah, yeah nobody likes him. Uh, what's his Great. name? Um, was that guy? The, the Lishi, the, oh, sorry. Great movie. <laughs> Amazing story. A great cast. It's just that the animation wasn't there. It. You know, when I was like... I heard the writing was phenomenal. Yeah, man. first time seeing it, I was like, it's, it's it bad, looks it's It terrible. looks like C movie quality. And then when I look back on it now, I'm like, wow, this is crap it's just <laughs> horrible it's shrek one is really badly animated too it's one of those like oh i looked i went so. back to shrek one and uh yeah it looks yeah, kind of funny laggy. it looks it tells the pioneer funny. of computer graphics it's kind of like with the first toy story some mm -hmm. good news for you guys are remaking it uh i don't know same how cast I feel about that. you know that Look, uh, same okay same cast but it's not gonna be the same but it's gonna Aww. be like it almost wasn't a movie. well i wouldn't want it the same yeah anyway but I don't know. I'm just pretty skeptical. They're, they're gonna like try to make it the first movie uh, tie into the rest of them, like more. You know what I'm saying? Like instead of just a standalone, like there's no like cliffhanger. Well, you, the first one didn't really have a cliffhanger, but like, uh, like well, I guess they'll add in a cliffhanger or yeah. something to add to. Because like part you, two. you know how like part two and like the rest on they like go they're off really. The together and then the first one's like oh hi there and then i think like the fourth <laughs> one rewrites the entire like time yeah that's yeah. the fourth one's the one with, with the rubble still skin yeah and then um you know that the original was recorded entirely with chris farley doing the lines yeah it was chris farley and then he died uh -huh. and then, and like, then michael myers did it they had already everything recorded and then he finally decided what if he had a scottish accent mm -hmm. or irish that's why like i can't i can't really like tell him. the the difference between the two dialects but he was like what if we if he did it like real late mm -hmm. into it when he finally decided you know what let's give him the accent and then he has to re-record all his yeah, lines everything wow yeah, also it was going to be a lot more like adultish it was going to have a lot more like adult humor and stuff like that Same he, was gonna, story. he was going to look a lot different too yeah. I'll, I'll put it on the screen if Bad I can hair, find it right? like a bowl cut or hair. Something. like Chris Farley mm -hmm. it, was, it was a lot more based off of Chris Farley and then they just changed like the arts on the internet yeah, they also did his movements too mm -hmm. so <laughs> it's he rolls around, falls he, and Like, the, a good scene is when he's putting out the fire, going to the, to go uh, rescue Fiona. Mm -hmm. So, and when they play that scene <laughs> with the, um, what would you call it, compilation or something like that? Like the... And what he does, his everyday life? No, like, with Donkey just going to the, the, vo the volcano. Oh, um, yeah. And they try to put out the fire and he's just like... <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like I think the scene that reminded Chris Farley was when he had the arrow in his ass. I thought that was very Chris Farley-ish. Yeah. That mm -hmm. was funny too. Damn, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. I did not know of, that. It was, it was all recorded. Then he died of the heroin overdose, and Jeez. like it, it was gonna. Well, that's how he died. He died. Of, he did speedball, which was like when you mix coke and heroin, and uppers and downers don't mix. You know, safety first. But, uh, but do your drugs safely. Cool, you're good to go. I always tell people, if you're going to do them, do them, but just do your research. But yeah, um, Chris Farley ended up dying, and then that happened. And the th um, it was a very big, yeah, like they already had the storyboard drawn. And a big thing was like, there was going to be a lot, 
Like a lot of uh, that, it was during a period where a lot of kids' movies came out, but they were supposed to be adult movies. I don't know if you guys knew, but Toy Story was also supposed to be an adult movie. Yeah, have you seen fucking uh, what's the kid's name? Andy, <laughs> creepy little guy. Fucking <laughs> 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 weirdo. Uh, <laughs> if you look closely, this is one of the things I always loved. If you look closely at the little kids running around in Andy's party, they're all Andy. Yeah, they're all the same it's model. So of creepy. Kid. <laughs> Put a picture of that. On yeah. I'll see if I can find it. But all the little kids just Andy in different shirts. Um, there's <laughs> like, long hair. Or <laughs> there was like, uh, there's like in the in the first opening line of Toy Story, like uh, the potato and the Mr. Potato and the pig are having a conversation, and he pretty much says, uh, he's like, uh, look, I'm Picasso because he has his face all rearranged, and the pig's yeah. like, I don't know what that means, and he's like, oh, you uncultured, uncultured swine. swine, and as he's walking, he hits a hockey puck, and he's like, he's like, move, you sorry puck. Instead of you, sorry, fuck. Like, <laughs> so there was like it was supposed to be a lot bolder. In other it's words. A, oh, words, another yeah. one like that. Um, in Shrek Two, you know how it has that like cop scene. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> the, the kitty. Yeah. yeah. Well, if you look, like in the the first thing they say in in that scene is we have a, we have a white Bronco heading down the street. Like OJ Ramp- Simpson. Round out of the white Bronco. Yeah. <laughs> in the beginning of the movie, when they meet Puss in Boots, they're like, "Man, we should. Th- this cat should be neutered." They say that. <laughs> they say that out loud. I was. I was like, "Damn, oh, that's funny." It's it's amazing what you miss, like, cause you know I've seen all these movies. I've only seen them like when I was younger, when I was a child. But now it's like looking back on it, like sometimes I'll rewatch. It's like, whoa, like I can't believe like. They did this oh. in a kids movie. They hide they hide so much shit yeah. in kids movies for the adults. Like in Phineas and Ferb, mm-hmm. uh, like you know how that Doofenshmirtz character always has these backstories. Mm-hmm. Um, he's like uh, he lost his girl to this dude named Huge Hans Hans <laughs> because he had because uh, of his shadow puppets and he his shadow puppets were garbage. It was just clumps. Yeah. But and then in the end, he's like, but alas. I lost her to a man with bigger fingers. <laughs> and I was just like, how did they let that I, through? I gotta say, like, being a father has really showed me all that. Cause, like, my daughter watches all the movies I watched growing up, and I missed all that shit. And it's hilarious. Like, catching all the adult innuendos. It's hilarious. Oh, you had to rewatch them all just so you can get understand. Even like, kids' cartoons. Like, I enjoy uh, The Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy, and oh, it's just like, endless toilet humor the whole damn ride. It's the whole fucking thing. That was Cartoon Network in yeah, a nutshell. Good 90s. Good 90s. Like, I miss the nineties like in regards to shows and cartoons and it was that was some great shit back then. And just I wish I was born in that time. Well even some of the newer stuff like Gumball, the great the adventures of Gumball, the yeah. wonderful Willie Gumball, I can't remember that. Gumball was that. impressive, yeah. yeah. Uh that's real. <laughs> some of the shit I've seen in that was like I was just like, What the hell? I need to watch this show. That was like their final stand, yeah. That was like the last good batch of shows. They just said, had, Fuck it, let's yeah. just shit on everything. It was like a little kid's South Park <laughs> pretty that's much. Pretty cool. Well, probably not to that extent, but still well, pretty pretty up there. What a great era of cartoons we grew up with, even like the good and the bad. Like it's pretty. We grew up with a lot of good eras of like cartoons and movies, and pop culture was very interesting. Like from the '90s to now, like shit, we've come a long way. Memes, memes alone. Like, I'm trying to be a lot more open minded to the cartoons that are out now. Like, there's a couple. Good we're, we're not the target audience. Yeah, for yeah these shows. It's a whole like Teen Titans movie. Go. Yeah. That show gets shit on by our generation so hard. Yeah. However, I did see a little bit of it. It is. I funny. got. I had some laughs from it. My daughter watched. I was it like, funny. we gotta stop being bitter about these things. They're not for us. Yeah. I, we, I, I grew up with the old Teen Titans. You know, badass. They're always like fighting crime. They look. They look badass, but they have their like comedy bits to it. This is more of a parody of it. It's not meant to be the same. Mm-hmm. Uh, of Satire. course. It's pretty <laughs> much it's satire, and but a lot of people hate on it, and like I, I kind of I had that mindset as well. Like I, I was like, fuck that show, fuck that show. That I saw it, I was like, I need to be. I was like, you know what, I need to be more open minded about this. I looked at it, I, I had some laughs from it. Ske- like I didn't want to, but I needed. I was like, okay, there's some there's some gems in here. Like it's actually some of it's actually pretty funny. And then like I know some people hated. Like, there's a part of Spongebob where it was just unwatchable to a lot of people. To me as well. But yeah. lately, from what I've seen, it's actually gotten a lot better. Because I think, correct me if I'm wrong, I think a lot of the old writing staff came back. Oh, really? I think. Uh, most of them came, a lot of them came back, and like some of the jokes are actually hidden again. Because uh, I think that like era there, I couldn't watch it because like, characters like... I'm pretty like, sure the meme culture brought it back. 
Probably because like the they took their characters and put them to the extremes. Like Patrick was just unwatchable for me because he was like he's always been stupid, mm -hmm. but it like it was to the point where he was stupid to where it looked like it was just like like he wasn't stupid. It was just him being an asshole. Like SpongeBob's in a lot of pain. He's just like oh, like let me help you, and he gets her hammer and fucking hits him with it. Like <laughs> that kind of shit. Like really, yeah, yeah, that's a little much. And then Patrick, went, like Squidward, wants to kill SpongeBob essentially, or something like that. It's nothing that they don't like. It's never that, like that on the nose, but that sort of thing. But it looks like everything, like recently at least, uh, at the time of recording this, the last thing I saw, I was like, okay, hey, this is actually pretty, pretty good. It's it's a pretty interesting. It's talking about Patrick, um, the voice actor for Patrick. Um, back in the '90s, there was this big show on HBO. It's called Oz. It was. I don't know if you guys seen Oz, but Oz is a show pretty much about a prison. It's an experimental prison. It talks about. It's like it's not a live no, show. Yeah. No. And there's a lot of prison sex. A lot of like prison groups like waging war on each other. It's a very violent, like real drama on HBO. So if y'all want to see Patrick having prison sex. So it's funny. The guy who played Patrick, he played a prison guard on the show before SpongeBob was a thing, and he's just the most vile prison guard <laughs> you could just think of. This guy curses and swears and beats the living. He's a Nazi prison guard. So on top of that, you can get the idea. Yeah, he's like a white supremacist guard, and it's like a whole storyline. And yeah, that's the guy who plays Patrick. And then like now, like a couple years later, he scored the gig for Patrick. And I'm just like, now that I'm an adult, I saw Oz like not too long ago. Like I was like, holy crap! Like talk about range! Like holy <laughs> shit! So yeah, I went from seeing this guy talking about like eat, you eat piss and shit, you fucking scum. And then like, oh, I think I've yeah. seen that. He's like eat piss and shit, you piece of crap. And then like all of a sudden, he's like, hey Patrick, hey say SpongeBob, let's go. <laughs> like, oh. like it's like it's crazy talking about range. But yeah. Uh, that's he's been with that project forever. I think he's still doing it. Um, I think his surname is something like Metzger. Have know. you seen the video of uh, SpongeBob cussing? It's I like, remember that. It's, it's like it's, they're asking um, Tom Kenny, uh, SpongeBob's voice actor, of, uh, about like the origin of SpongeBob, and he was like pretty much like, the Christmas thing. He was like, "Yeah, it was like we're gonna do like this little elf that's like down on his leg." He's like, "Man, motherfucker!" <laughs> and then they asked. Um, I can't, I can't remember what he said. He's like, yeah, it's kind of like, ah, it's just you get down, you're just like, motherfucker, you know? I was like, it's so weird hearing SpongeBob's voice cussing. Mm -hmm. like, it was just like jarring. It's like on cam. You guys know what cameo is? It's like this app. Yeah. Where you yeah. Pay celebrities. I know Gilbert Gottfried's on there. Gilbert you Gottfried. Give, you give him twenty five bucks. And he'll say he piss and shit. He'll just say <laughs> it for you right on the mic. He's like he's a badass. I know the guy from Breaking Bad, the cop. He's yeah. on there too, and he, you can pay him to say stupid shit. Somebody paid him like on Harambe's birthday to be like Harambe. We miss you. We love you. It's fun because these guys are just whoring themselves out for a couple sentences. <laughs> it is the best. I get a huge get laugh out of it. I might just pay somebody to say some stupid shit on my birthday. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, it's about that time. Um, judging by the, the time there, it looks like we went pretty over, but hey, who cares? <laughs> It's a uh, good run, yeah. I think today was pretty good. Yeah. And minus it. the technical difficulties and the <laughs> bloodshed. Mm -hmm. uh, but you know, again, we don't, we're not we don't consider ourselves uh, experts in any of the topics mm -mm. That we <laughs> talked about today. <laughs> so everything we talked about, take it with a grain of salt. Yeah. Yeah. Take it with a grain of salt, guys. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> again, thank you so much for watching. What? It's like clapping unsynchronized. <laughs> I'm never gonna be able to end this. Frozen for the frame. And then you're like, Thank you so much for watching. Have a good week. See you next week. Take care. <laughs> wow.